In our program today, we have the pleasure to interview Mrs. King, an American mosaic artist based in Dallas and San Francisco. With me today interviews Irene Javier Nieves. Mrs. King has been making mosaics since she was a little girl. Her art has been exhibited worldwide, being the first American artist to have a piece in the, co the permanent collection of contemporary art at the Museo d'Arte de la Città di Ravenna. Sonia is a founding member and past president of the Society of American Mosaic Artists, as well as past vice president of the Asociación Internazionale Mosaicisti Contemporanei in Ravenna, Italy. She also teaches intensive mosaic workshops around the world and is the author of the best-selling book Mosaic Techniques and Traditions. Sonia has been awarded many prizes such as the 2010 International Prize for Mosaic Art and Architecture and the two Spectrum Awards for Mosaic Walls at Children's Medical Center of Dallas. In 2017, she was honored as a distinguished artist by the James Renwick Alliance in Washington, D.C. Good morning, Mrs. King. It's a real pleasure for us to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you for kindly accepting to take part in our school project. You visited Merida and our school some years ago. Could you tell us about the experience? I have such fond memories of my visit to Merida, uh, spending the day seeing wonderful ancient mosaics, visiting the mosaic school, meeting so many other mosaic artists. It was such a great pleasure. And I look forward to coming back. In the meantime, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to speak with you all and am grateful for your invitation to participate in your project. Thank you. Mrs. King, when did you decide to devote your life to mosaic making? My mom created mosaic when I was a child, so I had some familiarity with the materials and the process. I went to art school, I painted, I sculpted, but I never really found my medium and I kind of got off into the business world. And after a pretty intense career in um, corporate life, I realized one day I just had to make some art. And I had my mom's old tools and I had some materials and for some reason I made a mosaic. And I bet I wasn't a third of the way through that first project and I knew that's what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. I was so engaged with the process, with the shaping of the materials, with the technical aspects as well as the mental aspects of it, I was completely engaged and that was it. Where do you find inspiration for your motifs? And how have your travels inspired your artwork? I've traveled a lot in my life and I've always been fascinated by the view of the world from an airplane window and the way the water works next to the land and different imagery like that. And I wouldn't say that I take direct inspiration from those kinds of things, but I've always been very interested in shape and form and the way everything comes together. So in a very obscure kind of way, that probably is my inspiration. What qualities do you look for in a material? Even after all these years, I remain completely fascinated by the materials for mosaic and finding materials is one of my great pleasures. Um, I like putting together a lot of different things. Um, so I'm always on the hunt for something new to interject into the mix, but it's a balance. I like finding matte and shiny and iridescent and reflective materials and textured materials and smooth materials and matte and shiny and I and remain completely engaged by all of those. I work with a great diversity of materials. Um, in this piece behind me, there's over a hundred different kinds of tessera in there. And part of the creative process, um, once I have something compositionally in my head, is figuring out what works well together and how the pieces are going to come together. And that is a constant balancing act. It's, um, I'll start and I'll have one piece and that's like fabulous, I love that piece. And I put another piece next to it and 
next to each other, they're even more than they were individually. And the third piece makes it all look better. And the fourth piece goes in. I'm like, mm, I don't know, this is getting tricky. And then the fifth piece goes in and suddenly the mix doesn't work. Suddenly I have to rethink and rebalance and it's a constant working back and forth. And the more pieces there are, the more of the inner weaving I have to work with and keeping the balance on a multiple of levels, whether it's in color or texture or reflectivity or shape or scale. Um, and it's endlessly engaging. How would you describe your creative process? What is the most challenging part of it? The most difficult part of the creative process for me is the conceptual process, figuring out what I'm going to make and why am I making, what does it mean? So I have a newer series called Coded Messages and it's all about communication and subtext and you know the misreading of what one says as opposed to what one is thinking. And it spent a lot of time in my head before it started going on the work table. Um, and now it's a matter of continuing to explore how, can I, how I can express that concept. Mrs. King, what do you expect your viewers to perceive when they look at your work? When people look at my work, I hope they see the overall imagery as something calm and serene and very pulled together while understanding the great diversity of materials that create that sense. It is a process that's filled with a lot of anxiety. So when something calm and serene results from that, it is quite the triumph for me. Uh, when working on commission, do you feel your creativity is somehow limited? Creating a commission can be tricky. And at this point in my career, I'm fortunate enough that I only take projects that I find artistically engaging. And I give as little information to the client as possible. I don't do very good drawings. I don't specify certain materials because I want to avoid all of that. What happens when I give too much information in the beginning is then making the mosaic becomes a technical exercise. And I can make the specifics of it, but that takes away any opportunity to figure out how the materials really want to work or these forms want to move in a different way because it's just better. But if it doesn't meet the brief, then suddenly I'm limited. So I like to work with as little planning as possible. What kind of advice could you give to a person who wants to succeed in the mosaic field? I think my best advice for aspiring mosaic artists is that care about what you do. Make enough work in the beginning, try different materials, try different techniques, see what really engages you, and then make the work for you. If you care passionately about the work and you are making something that engages you completely and that you really care about, other people will connect to it at that very passionate level. And that's when we make our best work, not when we are working with the idea of, well, will everybody like this? Or is this color in style this year? Those things are ephemeral and they really don't matter. What really matters is how deeply you engage with what you're doing. So my advice is to care and care deeply. We really appreciate your useful advice and would like to thank you again for making this interview possible. We would be delighted to see you back in Merida soon.